statistics and Excel. Coin flip statistics example in Excel part number two. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds and looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like this CPA thinking cap, for example. CPA thinking CAP, you see what we did with like with the letters? And this CPA thinking cap is not just for CPAs either. Anyone can and should have at least one, possibly multiple CPA thinking caps. Why? Because based on our scientific survey of five people, all of whom directly profit from the sale of these CPA thinking caps, wearing this CPA thinking cap without a doubt, according to the survey, increases accounting productivity tenfold. Yeah, at least. Yeah, apparently the hat actually channels like accounting energy from the quantum field ether directly into your head, allowing you to navigate spreadsheets faster. It's kind of like how in like the matrix when Neo learns Kung Fu, or at least that's what the scientific survey saying. So get one because the scientific survey participants could really use some extra cash. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet in a prior presentation. So you could start from there with a blank sheet if you so choose. And we will be continuing on with the practice problem in a format where you might be able to simply open a blank worksheet starting from here going forward as well. If you do have access to this workbook, three tabs down below, example, practice, blank, example, in essence, answer key, practice tab, having pre-formatted cells, so you can go right to the heart of the practice problem. The blank tab is where we started with a blank worksheet so we can practice formatting as we work through the practice problem. Problem. Let's do a recap of what we've done in prior presentations and then we'll take those concepts and continue on with this presentation. So we are imagining a scenario where we're trying to test whether or not a coin is fair. In other words, if we were to flip the coin, the null assumption is that it would come out or have a 50-50 chance of landing heads or tails. If we look at this from a, from a sampling kind of perspective, we can imagine the entire population then being a theoretical number as though we flipped it infinite amount of times. And of course, to test it, we're gonna take a sample, flipping it some finite amount of times and see whether or not we have a preponderance of evidence to overturn the null hypothesis, which is that we expect it to be a fair coin. Now, in order to do this in Excel, we practice using some tools to simulate a 50-50 uh, chance. And we used the between, so we took a random between one and two, so that Excel will give us a nice random sample. We showed how we can then, uh, we can then show the results in terms of heads or tails or ones and twos if we so choose and then how we can basically get, get these results and, and see how close they are to what we would expect if it was a fair coin, which would be the 50-50, noting it's not gonna be exact because we're just simply taking an example of an infinite number of flips. And then we saw how we can put together a table and come up with random uh, a random function in the tables and use that table to copy and paste uh, so that we can th run multiple tests. So in this case, we ran multiple tests with two and then three, and uh, I I'm sorry, with two and then three uh, and then four of them. And then we looked at our results, the percent that's head, the percent that's tails on a, a result to note that obviously if we take larger samples, we're usually going to tend more uh, closely to what we would expect the population result to be, which is going to be the 50-50, although of course uh, more uh, numbers in the sample does not necessarily, we're going to come up to a closer result than some other than a sample that has less results because there's going to be 
an element of chance that's going to be involved. So now we want to take the same concept and just expand the number of flips that we have. So let's say, let's say that we're going to test this out 100 times with just, let's say, 75 flips just to get a, a nice number. And then we'll try to approximate what if the coin is not fair? How can we use our between function to simulate something that isn't fair so that we can test a coin that's not fair, right? So let's do, let's do our, our same normal kind of test with a fair coin. So we'll build out, uh, we'll build out 100 tests. So I'm gonna make a skinny AR column. I'm over here in AR. If you're working in a new sheet, you can just build a new sheet and start in column one if you so choose, uh, or column A. <laughs> and then I'm gonna put the number here and I'm gonna say we're gonna go from one two and let's just do it to 75 i'm just going to not do 100 so that we have to still calculate the percent of the result so i'm going to select those two and take it down to let's say 75 so we'll flip it 70 times 75 times for each test 75 times i'm going to center that and then i'm going to say this is going to be test one and then test two and then I'm going to copy that out a hundred times. So I'm going to copy this out a hundred times. I'm putting my cursor on the fill handle, dragging to the right. Notice the testing excels being nice and gives us that little uh, little hint or to show us what how far out we are. So there we're at a hundred. So there's a hundred tests. Now I'm going to select all of these headers and make them my header formatting. So I'll select this whole thing and. I'm gonna make it home tab, alignment center, and at headers, I usually make black background and white. So black, white, and the headers. Okay, so now if I go all the way back on over, so now I'm, I'm gonna now just implement my random, my random function equals rand between, between one and two, one representing heads, comma, two representing tails, or you could do it vice versa, whichever way you want to see it, but one or two, enter. And so that, so that comes out to one, and so I'm, which is a heads, right? And I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna copy it all the way down to 75, and then I'm also, it might be easier to copy it and paste it instead of using the fill handle to drag it to the right so that I can see the headers. So I'm gonna copy this whole thing, right click and copy, and when I paste it, it'll paste the cells. So I'm gonna then select my cells from AU all the way to uh, the 100 tests. And then I'll put my cursor here and right click on the selected area and paste them, not one, two, three, normal pasting. And there, there we have it. Now we have 100 tests that have been populated. Now I might wanna put a table into this. Uh, the table might make it easier to kind of randomly shuffle these. If I click on anything, notice they kind of randomly shuffle. So if I, but if I insert a table, insert tab, table, insert, and okay. So now we've got our, our table. And if you sort the table up top in each row, that kind of gives it a good shuffle and then, and then it, it reshuffles all the all the time, right? So now what we wanna do, I wanna keep my shuffling here. I wanna keep this thing up so I, I can go back in and shuffle the 100 uh, tests. See, every time I click something, the whole table seems to shuffle. So I'm gonna hope that that is the case. So I get a nice random shuffle every time. And then I'm gonna copy the whole table. I'm gonna take the whole table, or maybe I could just copy the headers. Let's do it this way. I'm going to copy from AS as all the whole, all the way down to Excel, the whole column out to uh, test 100 at EO and control C or right click and copy. And then I'm going to paste it to the right, but I'm going to paste it one, two, three. So I'm going to paste it in, let's paste it over here in ER and right click and I'm gonna paste it, but make sure I paste it one, two, three, just the values only. One, two, three values only. So now it's not gonna shuffle and I've got a hundred random 
tests. Hopefully they're all random, right? So then I could go down and I can I can do my averages on the 100 tests. Let's go ahead and format it though. Let's select the ones up top and do my formatting, making this my header. I'm gonna go to the home tab, uh, black, white, and then center. And then I'll select all of the data and we'll take this all the way to the right and all the way down through the data and I'll make it that blue that I like to use. Home tab, font group, and I'm gonna hit the bucket drop down. If you don't have that blue, more colors, standard, there's the blue, boom. And then font group and center it. We could also make these thinner. So if I select the whole thing again, make them a little bit thinner because I only have one number in there. And then I could wrap the text so the headers still fit just to practice that. So I'll select the entire header field and go to the home tab, alignment and wrap the text. So now you've got the header. Now wrapping the text, uh, notice that, that that makes this whole row uh, wider. So if I had anything to the right, it could be it could kind of be kind of an issue because it makes everything on this whole row wide. But there's pro that's the pros and cons to wrapping the text. So then if I say the total heads on each flip, we'll we'll do our count if. So if it's a number one, it represents heads. Number two represents tails. So let's see what our results are. How many heads did we get out of? I only did 74 flips instead of 75. Okay, out of 74 flips. So equals count if brackets. I'm gonna put my cursor on this cell. I'm gonna do it with my keystrokes this time, holding control shift up, but then I wanna make sure I don't pick up the header. So I'm gonna say hold shift down and that picks up the whole range. I can still see the formula up here. And so I'm just gonna hit enter. And oh, I'm sorry, I didn't finish the formula. I have to say comma and the next criteria is uh, if it's a one, number one, and then I can close it. To see it down here, it's count if the whole range, comma, criteria one. And then tails is gonna be the same equals count if brackets shift nine. I'm gonna do it just with the keyboard now, up, up, holding shift and control up, holding just shift down so I don't include the header, looking at the formula bar, adding the comma to put the condition, the second criteria, number two, and enter. If I double click on it down here, you could see the whole function. And then if I put my total, it should come out to 74 using the trusty sum function equals the SUM of these two. So I'll put an underline here home tab, font group, underline. And then I can say the percent heads. Percent heads is gonna be equal to the total heads, 34 heads, divided by the number of flips, 75. And then that shows up as just a number because I don't have it as a percent formatting. Home tab, number group, percentifying it. I like to call it the percentify. Some people that annoys some people, but I think it's fun. And then I'm gonna un, I'll just keep it at that percent, so we'll round it. And then percent tails, and we're gonna say this equals 41 over 75. So that should be percentified 55. So the percent total should be 100%, right? So we're gonna say percent total is gonna be equal to the SUM of the 45 and the 55, which is one. And if I go to the home tab, number group percentify it comes out to 100, which I can't see. So I'll widen the cell out a bit. And so there it is. So then I'm going to put an underline here, home tab, uh, font group underline. And there we have it. Now I can copy this all the way across. And I can see for this first test, uh, 34 heads, 41 tails, that's a breakout of 45-55. We would expect uh, it to be 
but of course we only flipped it 74 times out of the total population which is infinite times <laughs> so so it's not going to be exact right let's let's say we did that though a hundred times so i'm going to copy this all the way across selecting them copy with the fill handle all the way across now notice that i can't see whenever you see these hashtaggy things that means usually the cell is not large enough so i'm going to select all of the headers all the way across to try to get them to be the same size selecting all of them to here and i need them to be about this wide so i'm going to put my cursor between es and et and make them wide enough to see that 100 percent so there we have it so if i look at all so if we look at all of these we could say if let's just look at the heads side which we would expect to be 50 percent right so we got 45 53 56 56 53 uh 60 49 right so some are higher some are lower but they're kind of hovering around the 50. so let's select this whole thing i'm going to put this in my my uh calculation formatting which i'll make another color to make it stand out as not part of the center of the table home tab uh font group and i usually make that dark blue or i have been at least lately <laughs> and then white on the text so we can see the text font and put some brackets around now it, now i might want to then say okay let's see if i can take these results let's just take a look at the heads and see if i can analyze that a little bit more and maybe i'd like to do that with a vertical analysis so i'd like to take this this is in a horizontal row and transpose it to see it vertically so what i can do there is i can copy this whole thing and it's kind of a two-step process. I'm gonna copy this whole thing and say, I would like to make that into a column, control C or copy. I'm gonna go up here, up top, and I'm gonna first paste it just the numbers only. I don't want the formulas, just the numbers. So I'm gonna right click, paste it one, two, three. And then I'm gonna copy that whole thing again, control C and paste it here, but transpose, right click, and paste special and transpose meaning i want you to reverse the x and the y's so now it's in a column format then i'm going to delete all of this stuff from ir all the way out i delete i'm deleting the whole column so you can just delete the numbers you don't really need to but right click and delete and so there we have our data so i could enter a table here if i want uh into this data uh so i could say let's go to the insert tab and make a table and say okay so there's our table and then i could say this is the expected value notice when i put something on the second line of the table and hit enter before i do that let's i'm going to undo that i'm going to select this whole data make it a percent uh home tab numbers percentifying it and then and you could add some more decimals maybe you want it more exact over here you know but let's keep it at let's keep the decimals off and then i'm going to put the expected value here expected so and notice when i hit enter it adds another table now the expected amount is just 0.5 or 50 percent it's already in a percent format and then i can say this is the difference i'm going to make another column diff and when I hit enter, it makes the whole column. This is going to be equal the 45 minus the 50. There's the difference. I'm going to copy this down too, just double clicking on uh, that uh, fill handle. And so now you can see the differences uh, some above and some below on the table. So that looks good. I'm going to, I have an extra column. So I'm going to delete this column over here, right click and delete. Let's do that. Now, if I want to add a total line to a table, I could do that by going to the table tab. So I'm on the table in the table tab. I could add a total column, which is in the table style options group. And then down here, uh, it puts a total. So 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 now i've got uh the the total column maybe on this one i want to take the average so notice i hit the drop down and say take the average which is taking the 
uh, average of these columns, which comes out to 50%, pretty close, right? Or if I wanted to see it with decimals, it's not exactly 50, but it's pretty close. And so this is gonna be 50, and the difference, if I sum up the difference, uh, we, we've got a difference of, of 33%. It's kind of a interesting. But in any case, let's go back up top. I'm gonna make IQ skinny, and then we could make a histogram of the results we got, right? So these are all the results we got. We could say, let's make that into a histogram. Let's insert a, uh, I'm gonna select this data, insert, and then charts and graphs, a histogram we've seen in the past. So now you've got a histogram that looks, you know, kind of, kind of like what we would expect, right? The center point is around the 50%. And the, from the results we have, we see the spread that's starting to build up like kind of like what, you know, what you might expect uh, when you when you basically run the tests. Now, if, if I was to do that, like I could do this whole thing again and then come up with a different histogram and see, see ex you know, what the difference would be if I ran, you know, the test multiple times, right? So I could, for example, go back to my, my uh, data and see if I could double click on it so it, so it will reshuffle. So now I've reshuffled my data and let's just build it one more time, right? So if I take this whole thing and I copy, let's do it from AS. I'm hopefully, I'm hopefully the whole shape table shuffled when I double click on it. And then I'm going to go from AS all the way to, to, uh, to EO right click copy. And then let's just imagine that we build this out, uh, again. So I'm going to go all the way to the right and just do it again. So we'll go all the way over here and I'm all the way over in B J right click, paste it one, two, three. So now we have uh, just the numbers and then I could format them. I'm going to select the whole header. I'll do this faster because we've seen it before selecting the headers. I'm going to make the header black and white. I'm going to center it and wrap the text while I'm here. And then I'm gonna select all of the data and we'll make that all of the data blue and bordered. So font group border and my, the blue. And then I'm gonna say this is gonna be heads. And by the way, I could just copy my results over here. So the, it's gonna be the same formulas as my dark blue. So why don't I just copy this whole dark blue thing and it'll calculate the same thing on the bottom of my second one. So I'll just copy this whole thing. Say copy that and bring it on over to the results. And I'm in uh, BJ 77 and paste it. So everything looks like it's going properly. So now we've got another set of results. So now let's do the same thing, copying the heads. I can go to the heads here and say, we'll just select all of them. I'm gonna transpose them going up top. I'll start in NB, right click, pasting just the values and then right click and copying pasting in in a right click special so that I can transpose making a column from them deleting all of this stuff which are no longer necessary so we'll delete that we can insert our table I could say insert uh, table and boom and then I can make the whole thing home tab number percents. And then I'm gonna delete this tab, right click and delete, make this smaller. And then let's insert a histogram, insert histogram. So here's my second histogram 
running a whole nother set of 100 tests at 75. And you can see it's close, but it's not exactly the same as the histogram we had over here. So if I copy this histogram and I put it down here again, let's just, I just want to test that it looks the same. Copy this histogram and put it to the right here. So you've got two histograms that are quite similar, but you can see they're not exactly the same uh, when we run our two tests. So this one, they have different buckets that they've built on the buckets as well, but you have a similar kind of shape to them, but not exactly the same. All right, and then next we just want to say, well, what if we had an unfair coin, like the coin was, was not fair? Well, well, how can we kind of represent that? Well, we could say, let's just, let's just test that out and say we we're going to have the tests, the test over here. I've got caps locks on tests. And let's say that we do the same thing, one, two, and bring it up to 75 or 74, uh, 74 tests right there. I'll center that. And then on, on the actual test, test one, we'll do the same random equals random between, and then I'm going to say between one and three this time. So we'll imagine this time that uh, one is a heads. And if it's not a one, which means it's going to be a two or a three, it's tails, right? So one's head. So now it's an uneven coin. It's going to land more on tails, right? So that's one way that we can kind of simulate uh, using our using our random function, an uneven coin, right? You can imagine different ways that we might try to uh, get the coin weighted unevenly. So it's a three. So if it's a two or a three, it's tails, right? And then I can copy this across test. We'll do this a little bit faster because we've seen it before. Test two. I'm going to copy these two. I'll bring that out to a, what do we have? A hundred tests to a hundred over here. One hundred tests, and I'll make this into a table so I don't need to format the headers. Maybe. And then I'll go all the way back on over and I'm just going to copy this down, copy this down and bring it down to 74. And then I'll copy that whole thing and paste it across to the hundred tests that we will make that would have an uneven coin. So now we're going to paste all the way across. So there's our table generation. Let's insert a table, insert table. And so now we have our, our random generator for the unfair coin. So now let's select the whole thing and, and make a static test, copy in the whole thing and put our cursor over here and we'll put it right here and right click. And I'm going to paste one, two, three, just the values. I'm going to select the headers and format the headers. So I'm going to make them home tab, font group, black, white, centered, and wrapping the text. I'll select all of the data now. And let's make that our blue and bordered. So we'll select the entire data set. And we'll make that home tab, font, bordered, and blue. And then now when I do my count, if it's heads, it's going to say, I want you to say equals count if brackets. And then I'm going to take the whole thing. I'm putting my cursor up one control shift up and then shift down. Now I'm going to look up here to my formula bar comma. If it's a one count it. And so that comes out to 21 and then I, one way I can do the second bit, if it's tails, I'm just going to say, I know there's 75 of them. So I can, or 74. So I could just say this equals, you know, this count of 74 minus 21. That would be the easiest thing to do. We could also come up with a, with a formula to say count 
uh, if it's not equal to, you know, one, right? And that would give it, but, but the easiest thing to do would be that. And I'm going to say then the totals and sum them up, which of course should come out to 74. And then we can take our percent, our percent heads versus the percent tails and then the percent total. So the percent head this time was equal to 21 divided by 74, making that a percent home tab numbers percentifying. Tails is 51 over 74. And we'll say home tab numbers percentify font group underline. The total percent then of course summing 2872 is number group percent 100%. So there we have it. If I copy this across, it's copied all the way across for our 100 tests. So now we've got that copied. I'll, I will make this uh, something funny happen here. Hold on. It's, oh, I, I can't, I have an, an issue. And that's because I used this 74 and that's not gonna move. That needs to be absolute. So that's R I seven one. That's uh, R R I seventy five. So I'm gonna put my cursor in here. F four dollar sign before the letter, dollar sign before the number, and then copy that across. And it should be good to go. And then I'll select the whole bottom bit and make it that dark blue and white for our totals down here. And so we'll make that home tab font group dark blue and white. So now you can see, of course, if I looked at the percent heads, then you're going to say, hey, look, that doesn't look right. Something looks looks leaning towards looks like it's leaning towards the tails, right? So if I let's copy all of the heads and transpose our totals. So I'm just going to say, if I just look at my heads, I would expect it to be around 50, 50. If I go up top and transpose it, first, I'm going to right click just the values. Then I'm going to copy that and put my cursor in VH, right click, paste it, one, paste it, special, transpose, enter, uh, delete all of this stuff because we don't need it anymore. And then I'm going to insert a table, insert table. Okay. Make it a percent home tab number percentifying it. So there, so there we have our numbers. And then if I wanted to say, this is what was expected, expected. And this is the difference, difference. Expected would be 0.5 or 50%. I'm going to double click, copying that down. The difference is 28 minus 50. And so notice the differences are all, you know, going one way. So now we have some evidence where we're saying, hey, look, something doesn't look right. According to these tests, we have a preponderance of evidence to then reject the null assumption that it's a fair coin which if flipped an um, uh, infinite amount of times would come out to 50 50 right in the total population i'm going to delete this now if i make a histogram of this data i'm going kind of quick because we're running long on time i can go to the insert charts histogram so here's a histogram of the unfair coin leaning towards tails and you can see the center of the graph. It still looks like it's centered, but you can see where the, the labels are over here uh, instead of around 50%. So the center point is spreading out over here, which is, is not where we would expect the center to be. Whereas if I copy the, the even coin and I copy the histogram, we came from that and we copy that over here. then let's paste that we can see that the center point is what we would is closer to, you know to what we would expect so so that's our uh uh 
this one's still kind of shifting over to the right here a bit. That's kind of interesting, but you get the point here. So you get so 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 the idea is, is that we would test it. The total population is uh, infinite number of flips here when we compare it to like sampling that we might do in an election. So an infinite number of flips, which would be 50-50, we took a sample, which is a finite number of flips. And here we've got a preponderance of evidence that certainly leads us to believe that something looks off. Here, we're still a little bit shifted over to, to, to the right, uh, but we're nowhere, we're nowhere near as skewed as obviously this one up top. Uh, and again, obviously because it's a random sample we can then get into questions of how close are we to the actual number given the samples, which we'll talk more specifically about in future presentations.